So the conversation on Spider-Man swinging that was shown in the Spider-Man 2 showcase is still out here. Some people have said, man, I would wish we had some new elements to the swinging and so on and so forth. I have seen these comments and I know the first knee jerk reaction some of you might have is, yo, why y'all complaining so much? Blah, blah, blah. We finally got a new Spider-Man game. Everybody wants to be picky. Now, it's easy to take that approach, but why don't we make sense of it? Why don't we talk about it from a logical perspective so that these concerns, because they're concerns coming from fans, folks. They're not concerns that are coming from trolls. I mean, it's easy to be able to look at trolls and say, man, you're just a hater. But what if somebody was saying, man, you know, we waited so long for this game. This game is going to be a new exclusive. What is the reasoning behind this? Why are the developers going with this paradigm? It's a very good and valid question. So first of all, let's answer it from the perspective of, what have other video games been doing in the past? How have they gone ahead to pretty much address their sequels and their mechanics? We'll take a very good look at games like maybe Street Fighter that have kept a lot of their you know concepts very similar. And if you actually have played the old Street Fighter games, it's not going to be too hard for you to come in and have at least a base level of being able to do your moves and your combos. I know Street Fighter seemed a little extreme. Let's just go to a superhero game and just make things make more sense. Look at the Arkham games. With the Arkham games, as they were moving through the different games and changing the games from environmental areas in terms of how they did Arkham Asylum, which was basically in a small you know, uh, area, a small unit, and then moving into a much bigger open world to go into Arkham Knight, where you now had, or Arkham City, sorry, uh, or open sandbox. Let me call Arkham City a sandbox to Arkham Knight. You will tell that the systems and the mechanics were basically the same. They kept the grappling system similar, basically upgrading a few things as you started the game. You know, like your grapple boost, you had to acquire it in Arkham City, but then it became just a regular thing in Batman Arkham Knight. So moving your mechanics across your games don't have to have drastic changes. If you do that, you're going to alienate your audience. In fact, Gotham Knights suffered from something that it didn't necessarily want to do in the first place. You know what I mean? A lot of people judge Gotham Knights by saying, hey, why did this game just not keep the Arkham mechanics? Even though it wasn't an Arkham game, it felt foreign to a lot of people to think that Warner Brothers Montreal, who made an Arkham game, should have gone ahead to just keep things similar, even though they were making a different game. So these things can come back and bite you if you actually make such changes too quick. Games are supposed to be accessible. They want you to pick up your controller when you start playing this Spider-Man game, and they want you to immediately, bam, you're already in it. No hesitation, no sweating for the most part, a majority of the aspects of the game. And then as they you know, start you know, um, introducing new concepts and new mechanics, then they want you to basically have to take the time to learn those new concepts and new mechanics. And as we've seen from our past videos, I've been talking about some of the combat mechanics and breaking them down. We're already seeing that things like, you know, your skill selection tree is going to require a little bit of faster, you know, processing and thinking more intuitive, you know, interaction with your controller and how you implement and apply your skills and your moves. So this is a big deal. Hence, I think the swinging in this game is definitely going to or need to remain the same. I mean, let's go for a quick spin right here on Miles Morales. This is the um, version that I got here on PC. And I can tell you that this particular game is actually pretty solid. The swinging, there is nothing wrong with this swinging mechanics, guys. The swinging is beautiful the way it's actually been adapted. Even on PC when you're playing it, you still have regular vibrating elements in terms of your controller that's still giving you a very intuitive you know, feel because... The wind feel is what they're going for. As Miles is swinging, you're going to realize that, you know, your character is swinging. If I put the, the controller on here and I hit the button, he's going to swing, swing, swing Miles. I don't have a camera control. I was going to have you hear how the vibration goes. I'm sure you already know how this works. But, you know, you can already feel as the character is going through the world that this is really good. The camera system works. Um, you know, the swing mechanics are, you know, snappy. You push it. He swings. You push it, he swings. He's got to get around the world, so he swings. He's Spider-Man, he swings. No need to change much, he swings. That's pretty much what the whole basis of my video is because if we don't address this thing from that perspective of saying, as development goes, we want players to be able to pick up our game and not worry about learning anything new so we don't lose anybody, if you feel me. We want to make sure that our players are just straight up 
capable of doing, you know, what it is that they're supposed to do with this game intuitively. So if anything, after the years of investment and after all the years of development research and, you know, trying to figure out the best way to get a swing system going, a swing system that, by the way, is better than the swing system in every other Spider-Man game, I would argue, that has ever been put out, except maybe, say, for some mechanics like people would like, like to be able to just basically jump straight into the air and all that. But, you know, guys, come on now. If you make a photorealistic game like this, you really want to follow and obey the laws of, you know, physics and aerodynamics, you know? He's got to attach that, you know, web somewhere. <laughs> it can't just be, you know, swinging into oblivion. I mean, I guess you can do a little bit of that, but, you know, that's about all it is that we're going to be able to get. And so this is what I think the developers wanted. They wanted you to have, you know, something of that sort where as you're playing the game as Peter or as Miles, you see, now I'm going to fall in water. There's no going back. You know, that's just it. So now I'm going to have to swim through this whole mess, uh, you know, at the end of the day. Yeah, see that? Look at that. How do you even swim in, in, in Miles in this game? There's no swim button. I just got to keep uh, surfing. Wow. There is no swim button. There is no way to swim out to, to get out of here. Or maybe I just don't know how to do it. I never really had to bother going into the water. I just played this game straight through. I think I beat it in like the the minimum amount of hours it takes you to beat this game. I can't remember, but I beat it really fast. But anyways, you you get you get my drift, right? You you feel me? All right, all right, Miles, let's go. There we go. Now we're gonna get okay. I was about to say, man, I was wild. <laughs> I was like, oh man, I'm stuck in the water and I'm trying to do this video. That must be uh that, that, that's embarrassing. All right, so this is, in my opinion, something that I think here as gamers, you know, we pay very close attention to in order to realize why developers make these decisions. Now, as for his gliding ability, I mean, if you think about it, you know, he's able to go ahead and do a gliding ability, which they show you in this particular gameplay, you know, uh, trailer when it's his time to go or even, you know, Peter himself. He gets to glide through this one, uh, you know, I think it's like a little train car of some kind. He's chasing down this, um, you know, these speedboats, and there's a little glide boost that they seem to have added, which is a good addition. So now they've already layered the complexity of the game mechanic, which is something that developers should do. And I think to me, it's sufficient. I don't think it has to be too flashy. I just think it has to work. And I just think, oh, there it is. It's here where he goes around and then he's gliding. So he's got a little glide suit underneath his web swing. To me, that's already... That's a double win. I mean, I think, you know, when people say that, you know, like, man, I just wish they would have changed. They already tweaked it. They've given you a little bit of a variation. And so to me, in my mind, I think this is definitely something that as game game conversations go on, we need to look at it not only from our end as the end user. We got to look at what the developers are trying to do. And to me, I see a cake, you know, they basically are making this, let's say a Bavarian tort. I don't know if many of you know what that is. If you're a baker, you know what I'm talking about. It's a chocolate cake that has multiple layers and multiple cream layers on the layer. So they put the cake down one layer of the cake. Then they put a little bit of, you know, the frosting or whatever the topping is. Then they put another layer of the cake down and then they put another layer of frosting. The developers made their Spider-Man game by starting with their swing mechanics as basically one, uh, you know, cake and frosting, right? And now that they've added that mechanic, that other mechanic is now the second layer of the cake. And then all the other things that you might be able to do with that glide mechanic, that glide boost mechanic, now becomes the second layer of frosting. Making the cake a very complex, very delicious cake, by the way. I mean, probably not healthy for you, but, you know, once in a while, if you want to enjoy, you know, some sweet treats, perhaps you should find yourself this particular cake, uh, the Bavarian Tort or Spider-Man 2, and, uh, you know, make sure that you partake thereof. So thanks for watching the video. I appreciate you guys' time and audience. Uh, let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. These conversations need to continue to happen in our gaming community. I understand that the meme wars are the best, you know, they seem like the cheapest way to go, but why not explain things from a dynamic perspective? Thanks once again. Peace out.